Good evening, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, together with the Presidential Communications Office. We bring you the latest, widest, and most comprehensive news coverage from the People's Television, IBC, Philippine News Agency, Philippine Information Agency, and Presidential Broadcast Service. I'm Princess Habiba Sarit Paudak. And I'm Joe Fernandez from Radio Pilipinas. Welcome to Balitang Pambansa. National and local governments' preparations for Tropical Storm Christine are in full swing. Albay Province has been placed under a state of calamity due to the effects of Tropical Storm Christine. President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. lauds the Philippine Coast Guard's contributions and commitment to safeguard the country's maritime borders, calamity response, among others, during the PCG's 123rd anniversary. President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. highlights the need to focus on scaling and attracting more investments to bolster the electric or e-mobility sector. The Department of Science and Technology, or DOST, eyes to set a new Guinness World Record for bamboo planting. Once more and yet again, the whole of government is faced with the task of disaster response and risk mitigation with Tropical Storm Christine poised to make landfall tomorrow somewhere in northeastern Luzon. But as always, national government's disaster response agencies and local governments are all set and prepped for the worst with logistical support, communications and relief operations all in place and good to go at a moment's notice. PTV's Claisel Pardilla has more. Typhoon Christine is expected to make landfall in Isabella province on Wednesday morning. The Department of the Interior and Local Government is all prepped up and good to go following the directive from President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. Local governments and various agencies are on high alert. Evacuation centers and essential assistance are ready for deployment at a moment's notice. All units have been mobilized. All local government units have been informed. No matter where it will pass, all local government units, all civil defense units have been alerted and I think we're prepared. The DILG has recommended that local governments suspend classes at all levels across the zone from today until tomorrow, October 23. However, the final decision on class suspensions remains with the respective LGUs. The Office of the Civil Defense Project's Typhoon Christine could impact a staggering 30 million people. 18,000 barangays are at risk of flooding and landslides. The chief executive is committed to ensuring a peaceful commemoration of All Saints Day and the upcoming Christmas celebrations. The DILG pledged to double police presence in public and crowded areas. We've instructed the PNP to double their presence, especially in the malls, in the public sector transportation, and in the LRT and MRT, kung saan uso ang dukutan, ang, ang mga snatchan ng mga bag. From PTV, Kalei Zalpardilia, Balitang Pambansa. Meanwhile, the Office of Civil Defense, or OCD, assured to be on top of the situation when it comes to the possibilities or possible effects and damages the tropical storm Christine might cause. In fact, Charlie Protocol has been activated in seven regions. This is the highest level of emergency preparedness of the OCD. Among the regions the agency is focusing on are the Cordillera Administrative Region, Regions 2, 3, 5, and 8, Calabarzon, and Memaropa. Meanwhile, BARM and Region 1 have been placed under Bravo Protocol, while Metro Manila Region 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, and the Caraga Region are under the Alpha Protocol. For the part of the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, it estimates that over 33 million individuals might be affected by the weather disturbance. Sa kasalukuyan, ang quick response fund standby funds ng DSWD Central Office ay nasa mahigit 194 million pesos. And ang nasa uh, field offices naman po natin ay nasa uh, around 47 million pesos. 
the province of Albay has been placed under a state of calamity due to the impact of Tropical Storm Christine. According to Philippine News Agency's report, the Sangguniang Panlalawigan unanimously approved the declaration during regular session this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or FIBOX, issued a Lahar advisory for Mayon Volcano due to Tropical Storm Christine. Based on the information gathered by Radio Pilipinas, there is a possibility of lahar flow from the Mayon volcano, especially since the weather disturbance is expected to bring heavy rains to the Pico region until tomorrow night. Moreover, 27 barangays in the town of Libon are submerged in floodwaters caused by heavy downpour. The water level rose rapidly, leading to the forced evacuation of affected residents. Eight households were washed away in Barangay Bonbon due to the severity of the flooding. Tropical storm Christine was seen at 275 kilometers east-northeast of Verac, Catanduanes or 400 kilometers east of Daet, Camarines Norte with maximum sustained winds of 75 kilometers per hour near the center, gustiness reaching up to 90 kilometers per hour and is moving west-northwest ward at 15 kilometers per hour. The Bicol region, Isabela, Aurora and Quezon will have stormy weather. Rains with gusty winds will fall in Metro Manila. The rest of Luzon, Eastern Visayas, Dinagat Islands, and Surigao del Norte. Trough of Christine will bring cloudy skies with scattered rains and thunderstorms in Zamboanga Peninsula, Northern Mindanao, Barm, Sok Sargent, and the rest of Visayas. Meanwhile, the rest of Mindanao will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms. Over time, the Philippine Coast Guard has expanded its duties from mere coastal and high seas patrols to ensuring border security, enforcement of the country's maritime laws, and disaster response. Then again, its shining and finest hours have been in protecting the country's sovereignty in the fisher folk. PTV's Kenneth Paciente on the Commander-in-Chief, taking pride and heaping praise on his men in the PCG on this truly momentous occasion. President Ferdinand R. Marcos Jr. recognized the invaluable role of the Philippine Coast Guard plays in protecting the territory of the Philippines. This acknowledgement and recognition the President paid on the PCG on the commemoration of the 123rd anniversary of the institution. According to the President, due to the changing times, the PCG is no longer just a simple force patrolling the waters of the country. Instead, its responsibilities have expanded to include border patrols, enforcement of marine laws, and even responding to calamities. Indeed, your emergence as a key player in our nation's maritime security reflects your commitment to service and exemplifies how to advance while remaining true to your core mission. You protect our, mari our maritime borders, standing resolute in the face of those who would exploit our resources or threaten our way of life. The President also pointed out the PCG's contribution in enforcing laws against illegal fishing and preventing attempts to destroy the marine resources within the country's jurisdiction. This despite climate change, high geopolitical tension, as well as the isolation and dangers in the middle of the sea. You are the vigilant stewards of peace and order upon our seas, ensuring that the rule of law prevails across our waters. In the face of tension, it is your calm resolve that prevents disputes from turning into conflicts, demonstrating to the world that embracing dialogue and cooperation is the true essence of strength. This is manifested as well by our awardees to whom I express my gratitude and my deepest congratulations. He added, no words or rewards can match the service of the PCG. Therefore, the President assured that the government will continue its efforts to improve and provide for the needs of the institution. This administration reaffirms its support to, to efforts that, that will improve your fleet and our air assets as well, to maritime domain awareness, weapons capability, and necessary infrastructure development. This will boost your capacity to respond to any operations. Be assured. You're never alone in carrying the weight of this mission. The PCG, in turn, assured to maintain the integrity of the institution and vowed uninterrupted monitoring vigilance over the nation's territory. It also thanked the chief executive for the support given to the Coast Guard. Our heartfelt gratitude for your unparalleled wisdom, your guidance, and inspiring leadership. 
and hands-on support, including in the acceleration and expansion of our modernization programs in order for us not only to survive but to thrive in the age of AI and autonomous technology. Meanwhile, President Marcos Jr., together with First Lady Luis Araneta Marcos, wearing her uniform as Vice Admiral of the PCG Auxiliary, led the recognition of the 14 personnel of the Coast Guard who exhibited exceptional performance in their duties. From PTV, Kenneth Pasciente, Balitang Pambansa. The Office of the President issued Memorandum Circular No. 67 declaring the suspension of work in government offices and classes in all levels on October 31 beginning 12 noon. The order aims to give government employees the full opportunity to observe All Saints Day and All Souls Day. However, this does not apply to government agencies whose functions are linked to delivery of basic and health services disaster response or preparedness, and vital services. Private companies and offices are given the discretion to suspend work if they deem necessary. Coming right up, President, President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. eyes to strengthen the country's e-mobility sector. And what are the new NAIA Infra Corporation's contingency measures to address baggage delays? Let's find out when Balitang Pambansa returns. Sa isang malayang demokrasya, mahalaga ang pagiging bukas. Mahalaga ang partisipasyon ng bawat isa. Dahil karapatan ng lahat na makibahagi sa mga usapin, at pagbuo ng mga batas para sa isang bagong Pilipinas. Congress TV Tutukan ang mga sesyon ng Kongreso sa PTV at sa aming digital platforms. Kahit saan, kahit kailan, watch Democracy in Action! Congress TV Consumer Watch Mga praktikal na paraan sa pagdidipid at wastong paggamit ng tubig Hugasan agad ang mga plato para mas madaling linisin ang mga ito Bawasan ang pagdidilig ng mga halaman at gawin lamang ito tuwing madaling araw o sa hapon I-defrost sa chiller ang mga gagamitin karne at iba pang frozen food para hindi na kailangan gumamit ng tubig Gamitin ang full load ng washing machine tuwing maglalaba at maglagay lamang ng tamang dami ng sabon o detergent. Iksian ang shower time o pagligo. Kung maaari, gumamit na lamang ng timba at tabo. Gamitin ang pinagbanlawan tubig sa paglalaba sa pag-flush ng toilet bowl. Malaking tulong din ang tamang paggamit ng dual flush para makatipid ng tubig. Sa mga opisina, maiging i-switch off ang main valve ng tubig kapag wala ng tao. At para malaman kung may tagas ang linya ng tubig na nagdudulot ng malaking aksaya, I-check ang metro sa hating gabi o sa madaling araw kapag wala nang gumagamit. Maging bahagi ng solusyon at sama-sama tayong umaksyon. Dapat laging listo. Sa darating na May 12, 2025, May 82 lalawigan sa buong Pilipinas ang pipili ng kanilang mga gobernador at vice-gobernador. Ayon sa Local Government Code of 1991, ang mga gobernador at vice-gobernador ay manunungkulan ng tatlong taon at maaaring mare-elect ng hindi hihigit sa tatlong magkakasunod na eleksyon. Ang mga kandidato ay dapat mamamayan ng Pilipinas. Registered voter at residente sa probinsyang kanilang paglilingkuran ng hindi bababa sa isang taon. Marunong bumasa at sumulat sa wikang Filipino o iba pang lokal na wika o dialekto. At hindi bababa sa 23 taong gulang sa araw ng halalan. Ang gobernador ay ang nagkokontrol at nangangasiwa ng lahat ng programa, proyekto, serbisyo at budget ng lokal na pamahalaan. 
siya rin ang nagpapatupad ng mga batas at ordinansa sa buong lalawigan. At tinitiyak na na ihahatid ang mga pangunahing serbisyo sa kanyang mga nasasakupan. Samantala, ang bisi gobernador naman ang siyang presiding officer ng sangguniang panlalawigan, ang legislative body na gumagawa ng mga lokal na ordinansa at batas para sa kapakanan ng mga mamamayan. Siya rin ang tumatayong kapalit ng gobernador sa pagkakataong may permanent o temporary vacancy ang posisyon ng punong panlalawigan. Isang mahalagang kaalaman para sa matalinong pagpili ngayong halalan. The government will further strengthen the e-mobility industry in the country. In a sectoral meeting in Malacanang with the Department of Science and Technology or DOSD, President Ferdinand R. Marcus Jr. stressed the importance of providing incentives to potential investors. According to the Chief Executive, investment and scaling must be addressed because there are the most difficult aspects of boosting the sector. Although local investors will be given importance, the country remains open to anyone who wants to invest in the industry. However, focus on production design is paramount. A strategic roadmap is being created under the Electric Vehicle Industry Development or EVITA to develop a policy that will help provide incentives for electric or e-vehicles. Based on DOSD's latest records, more than 25,000 e-vehicles are registered in the country and 705 e-vehicle charging station providers that have generated over 10,000 jobs and more than a billion in investment. The, the new NIA Infra Corporation or NNIC, the operator of the Nino Aquino International Airport or NIA, is collaborating with Cebu Pacific to ensure the effectiveness of contingency measures to address a malfunction in NIA Terminal 3's baggage handling system. In the past, the, the processing of passengers' check-in luggage has been disrupted due to a problem with the system. Thus. To prevent causing inconvenience to travelers, the NNIC and Cebu Pacific have increased their respective manpower to help in facilitating baggage processing. Alternative systems and protocols are also activated to speed up the process in resolving the issue. Meanwhile, the Government Service Insurance System, or the GSIS, announced plans to build a massive transport hub on its three-hectare property in Quezon City, comparable in size to the Paranaque Integrated Terminal Exchange, or the PITX. According to Philippine News Agency's report, GSIS President and General Manager Wick Veloso described the project hub as a future world-class intermodal transport facility designed to provide an efficient, comfortable and seamless travel experience, integrating, integrating uh, bus services with other transport modes including MRT7. By 2027, it is expected to improve access to the nearby Fulcoa station of the MRT7, which will run from the North Triangle Common Station in North Edsa to San Jose del Monte Bulacan. The Armed Forces of the Philippines, or AFP, conducted 64 patrols and missions in the West Philippine Sea from October 1 to 18 to assert control over the area. In a report gathered by the Philippine News Agency, these included two sea lift operations, 14 sovereignty of patrols, one surveillance patrol, one medical evacuation, and two resupply missions. The AFP stated their naval and air force also carried out four surveillance operations and 40 maritime patrols, although they did not disclose specific locations or assets used for security reasons. These efforts aim to enhance monitoring and support operations in the West Philippine Sea. Batangas organizes a lechon fiesta aimed to prove pork in the province is safe to eat despite recorded African swine fever or ASF cases. Baby De Castro from the Philippine Information Agency, Calabarzon, has the full report. 
Department of Agriculture's International Training Center on Pig Husbandry brought together renowned known lechoneros from Balayan, Cuenca, and Lipa City for the Lechon All You Can Fiesta in the province of Batangas on October 15. The event sought to assure consumers that locally produced pork is safe for human consumption despite the ongoing challenges posed by African swine fever. The Lechon Fiesta, which is part of the ITCPH Putok Batok Program, supports the DA's Eat Local, Support Local campaign while promoting the local pork industry. ITCPH Center Chief Dr. Ruth Miklat Sonako said the program demonstrates that Pinoy pork from Batangas remains safe and high quality as it undergoes rigorous inspections from agencies like the National Meat Inspection Service or NMIS. The National Federation of Hog Farmers supported the initiative, noting its importance in reviving the local hog industry. Local lichoneros are confident about the industry's recovery as they assure their lichon is safe for consumers. The Batangas provincial government placed the entire province under a state of calamity on August 9 due to a surge of ASF cases. This prompted the Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Animal Industry to roll out government-controlled vaccination against ASF. From PIA Calabarzon, Baby De Castro, Balitang Pambansa. On the other news, the government leads an activity in Cotabato that aims to set a Guinness World Record for bamboo planting. BIA Sub-Sergeant Christian Matuliano has the full report. More than a thousand individuals from various sectors joined a historic bamboo planting activity on October 18 in Carmen, Cotabato Province. Dubbed as Kawayanihan, a circular economy movement, the event was spearheaded by the Department of Science and Technology in partnership with different government and non-government agencies and various stakeholders. The town of Carmen is one of the 20 locations in Mindanao to be part of the massive effort to attempt a Guinness World Record for the most number of people simultaneously planting bamboo. DOSC Undersecretary Dr. Teodoro Gachalian expressed gratitude to the diverse groups who came together for the movement, showing their passion for for environmental conservation. We do not set those bamboos in the field today just to set and get pre-recognition for having planted the most number of bamboos in a given time. Or having the greatest number of people participating in that activity. What we're doing today is its relevance to the needs of our country. Its relevance to the needs for each and every citizen of this country to do something to preserve human life, maintain proper and balanced ecological system in our, in our countryside. Because this is the only thing where our lives entirely depend. Meanwhile, Kiev Mark Dugo, one of the participating youth advocates from Carmen, expressed his commitment to sustainability by highlighting the significance of bamboo planting in mitigating climate change. Siguro po ang good effect nito sa ating community is since it is for the environmental purposes, it will lessen the uh, um, greenhouse gases maybe and it can also protect us from the heat, uh, extreme heat which is very um, evident now in our community. The OSC continues to promote bamboo as a vital tool that supports environmental sustainability, mitigates climate change, and provides livelihood opportunities. The success of the activity demonstrated the collective efforts of the different individuals from various sectors in promoting bamboo and its positive impact on the environment and economy. From the Philippine Information Agency Subsurgeon, Christian Matoliano, Balitang Pambansa. Several areas in the country have suspended classes tomorrow, October 23, due to Tropical Storm Christine. Manila, Quezon City, Valenzuela, San Juan, Mandaluyong, Malabon, and Taguig have canceled classes at all levels in public and private schools. Batanga suspended classes in public and private school from kinder to senior high school, while Cavite, Bulacan, Laguna, Pangasinan, Ilocos Sur, and La Union also suspended classes at all levels, while Aurora Province and Nueva Ecija suspended classes and work in government offices tomorrow. And that concludes our rundown of the latest, widest, and the most comprehensive news and information from all across the nation. From Radio Pilipinas, I'm Joe Fernandez.
This is your trusted news source, always ready to inform and serve the Filipino people. Catch Balitang Pambansa again tomorrow at 7 a.m., 12 noon, 6 p.m., and 9.30 p.m. for more updates and developments. From Radio Filipinas, I'm Princess Abiba Saripaudak, and this is Balitang Pambansa. Balitang Pambansa.